poor thing just can't get any, any, any uh, rear axle underneath anytime soon. Uh, welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm sorry I've been absent for a little while. It has been a uh, trying few months. Uh, everything was going good for a little while, and then uh, I guess 2021 truly showed its colors. So, uh, as you all know, I had the skid steer, and um, I was going to hope to be doing some mulching videos probably at least a couple months ago, but um, if you look out, it looks kind of kind of wet and that's because probably in the last so it's the end of may right now from the first weekend in may which we got 17 inches of rain within three days uh fast forward a couple weeks later got a couple more big storms in here probably 10 plus inches and then last night i'm sure we just got about four or five so it has been super wet and annoying and just I'm ready. I'm not really ready for the summer heat, but I'm ready for it to dry out. So, um, with that being said, Colorado is still a go. Um, plan on a trip from all the way from coastal Brazoria County to Silverton, Colorado, 18 plus hours. So, um, we're still planning on a road trip up there, taking these two Jeeps with us. Uh, so as you can see, just by looking at this one, we've got a lot of work to do. Um, I give give you a little bit of update and kind of where I've been and uh, just trying to cue you in on what's been going on around here. So if you look on this one, we've got the transmission completely out. It had some seal leaks and uh, we were just hoping it was going to be that, but uh, it never is. So um, basically what happened was is we got some worn worn synchronizer the shaft's probably worn so when the guy put the um 350 or i'm sorry 265 v8 in it you have to make sure and get the right adapter so you can have the right spacing between transmission and uh engine flywheel all that stuff so nothing's bound up well he just found a nice plate to weld onto the bell housing that's decent size um, and didn't change any input shafts or I don't know how much research he did before doing it, but I can tell you he didn't drive it very much because, uh, it didn't have very much life left in it as far as transmission parts. Uh, a lot of pieces were broke. This is supposed to have an extension on it, you know, probably a couple inches. This ring is supposed to be, have some teeth on it, kind of like the other ones. Um, these are of course your needle bearings or whatever there's a couple little pieces in here somewhere anywho um so yeah we've been working on that that thing over there um i pulled the dana 44 out of that cj2a it's a aftermarket or after production axle like a out of a cj5 whatever but with the dana 18 it pretty much just fits but had problems with um nobody had set up the proper pinion depth nobody had set up the proper backlash or anything i mean it was just slapped together um and luckily it probably never gone over 30 miles an hour ever so kind of got it back together got new bearings in it and everything and hoping that that's going to be good enough to get us playing around in colorado uh, it also has a new locker so got that to look forward to as well. It's got the ends protected because I'm about to put the axle shafts in it. And I'm about to work on setting the end play. I think I'm gonna have to add another shim, which means I gotta pull axle shaft back out a little bit, but that's okay. But anyways, yeah, this is what we've been going on. As you can see, I'd like to keep a better clean house, but it has been a hell of a few months. Um, with all that rain, I had some high water at my property and it just been hell trying to run out there, keep stuff from either getting flooded or once it's been flooded, you know, drain the oils, drain the, you know, water out of everything, get them turning over, get, you know, just trying to save as much stuff as I can. So, and of course my dad got a, uh, he had back surgery a couple months ago. Uh, I, I, late part of april or middle part of april so his help has you know been 
there for me uh, mentally, but physically just haven't had anybody to, to help share the burden with. So uh, he came out here the other day, scraped some of all this crap off this transmission. And like some gear oil exploded all over it and then just got covered in years of dirt. So he did help me do that. And he's been helping me look at some research and stuff. So uh, not totally out of the game, just just a little bit. But yeah, so this is what's been going on. Um, I am hoping to put more videos out soon. I just, uh, guys, I haven't had the time. I mean, I get seven days off. I work seven on, seven off. I work seven days, 12 hour shifts, and I'm, I'm off seven days. But sometimes I don't get all my seven days. I have to work overtime. Other days, are, you know, I just run it ragged um, from daylight to dusk. Usually I work harder on my days off than I do at work. So um, yeah, I'm trying, but uh, it's just been hell. So. I think uh, when we go to Colorado this summer, um, anything worth reporting or showing, uh, I'll gladly put into a YouTube video and I think I'm going to send it out then. But uh, I'm going to try to get some of my older videos out that I haven't had to, time to send out. So we'll go ahead and proceed like that and see what happens. Appreciate all y'all's support. Uh, I've been watching the numbers. I haven't posted anything in a couple months and man, it's just been crazy what, uh, what's been popping off. So. I really, truly appreciate the support, guys. Thank y'all. Enjoy the video. Not doing a whole lot today, just finishing up the front end. Put some new cotter pins in, tie rods. I'll have to replace some of those later so I'm not getting too carried away. But the thing I wanted to show y'all today, what we're gonna work on, is where these fenders go, I have a broken off bolt. Um, so we're gonna attempt to grind it down, uh, tap it, and try to you know, get an easy out in there and get her out. Um, a lot easier said than done, so we'll see what happens, but that's our plan anyways. So let me get started here. Bonus addition, you get to see how to change your grinding wheel. It does matter how you flip this washer deal. So like on a flat disc like that, you want this side up. That way it uh, it bounds into the, it, uh, holds the disc really tight. This side, on this one, you want it down. That way it's kind of out of the way and uh, it has enough room inside to, to still tighten up. Just like that. Plug her back in and grind her flat. It's important that it's flat. That way you make sure you can get a good center punch in the middle and then you can have a drill bit. All right, let me get all this stuff off. I'll grab some more tools and I'll let y'all back in on the action. All right, we're back. Um, I had to go, actually I had to grind this thing off. This little cable here, it was in the way. Man, did a good job on that one. Uh, but just right here, you know, it's been there since, I'm gonna assume factory, so 46. But uh, man, I just need to go, it was in the way. It was just tucked behind stuff. I'm trying to eliminate a lot of that crap, just, you know, it's just, stuff to deal with later and I don't want to mess with it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a center punch, probably use this one, it's a bit sharper. You're going to try to find dead center of this hole. I mean, you don't have to measure anything, but you want to be as close to the center as possible. When the wheel placed hit, I would definitely kind of tap it a couple times because this is your guide for your drill. So. Alright, we got a 
good center punch hole now. Good and stiff. So I like to use the method of start with a small drill bit in the middle and drill out to a bigger size. Helps you do a couple things. So as you're going to a bigger size, you can try to get a better easy out to, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, you can use a smaller easy out at first. If that doesn't work, move to your bigger ones. It gives you room from the center to this bolt edge, you know, away. So I guess what I'm saying is like you have a lot of options. So if you drill a big hole, which is, would be hard to at first through this bolt, um, you won't, I mean, you won't have any option. You'll have just that one, and then you'll get to that point where you might be getting into the threads. So yeah, start off small, it's easier to drill, and you'll have a lot easier time. All right, so what we're using here is not H2O. I need to rub that off. This is called hogwash, and it's made by Milwaukee. Uh, it's a drill lubricant. So um, yeah, you can use WD-40, but this stuff is a little bit more economical. Like you can buy it for not very much, and it makes almost a gallon. It comes in like a 16 ounce bottle. So I mean, you get a lot of bang for your buck. And uh, yeah, that, that's what I'm gonna start. You, you know, that's what I use a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with that. Try to use some of these older drill bits. I'm not saying anything's gonna work very well, but I've been using the crap out of my dad's new Milwaukee tool bits, which are awesome. If you haven't got a pair that are set, grab you some. I tried. Try a good one like 764 so that you know you don't ever really need to use it. Let's see how this works out for us now. Oh yeah, it's going a bit chunk now. All right, that's done. The bit should be still pretty sharp. The reason they get dull is because the metal gets hot and turns like butter and you know, it's trying to, to go through that and it ends up damaging the bit. I'm gonna stop here and go look at the easy outs I have and see what size drill bit it says to use real quick. All right, so the easy out that I'm gonna try to use, a little bit heftier and on the, it's a 3 8 bolt. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit bigger one. Um, I could use one that's probably about that size, but I just have a feeling that it won't really work too well. So it says to use a 1564 drill bit. So that's right here and we're like right here. So I'm gonna work up to these. Uh, and that one and then I'll uh, show you when I can get this thing in there and we'll try to get her out All right, we just hit our depth uh, with the 15 to which is what the easy out says to, to do So I put this drill bit up real quick I'm saying I don't want any more but not yet. You Don't get lost or something Okay, so now this should go in there to a certain point. We've got to hit it in with a hammer. All right, sorry about that. I had to uh, grab a little deal. I don't know if y'all have ever seen these before, but uh, for easy outs and taps, these things work great. Basically, like it's got a little deal in there to accept a square peg, and so that way you can put a ratchet on it. And with something like this, you definitely want something that's putting a good, like, Good rotation on it, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So we're gonna go ahead and hit this bad boy in there. Try to anyways. Straight to. All right, I think that's in about as far as we can get it. Put this thing on here now. 
Make sure we gotta go the right way too. soak in but as we can say we tried mm. Damn. it's bending on me a little bit For a second. Let's see if I can grab y'all real quick. I'll show y'all. She's a turning. Yeah, I, I, I really, like, I kind of scared myself a little bit. I, I really thought that thing was just broke off. We win. See what I mean by being so close to center as possible? I didn't have very much room on this other side. So it's good that it did come out. So now you have good threads. We'll probably, well, we're gonna run a tap thread just to make sure. But you've got good threads. We can just buy another 3 8 uh, These are fine thread on the frame. Fine thread is smart, uh, stronger than coarse thread, just in case you want to know. Of course, a lot of it depends on the bolt, like type of steel. But as far as thread count, you're going to hold more with fine thread, which is why a lot of these bolts in on the engine, on like your real high stress points, are fine thread. So, um, yeah, we'll get another 3 8 by 24 fine thread bolt. Kind of like this one. I'm gonna replace all the bolts on the frame just to make sure this doesn't happen again. Um, usually I would just put them back, but they're they're pretty corroded and it, it won't be long. There's another one on the side, other side, just like this. Um, it's got an empty hole, so like it, we, we got lucky enough that somebody already removed the bolt, but they never put anything back in it. So may need a helical. We'll see, but yeah, that makes me happy. So I was, was going to try to do that before I put the fender back on and all is well. So, all right. Well, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, hopefully that helped you out. Uh, when you pull, like they say on Instagram, when you pull out these tools or your tap and die set. So if you're pulling out this thing or any of these, most of the time you're not having that great of a day. But... Sometimes it's good. Sometimes you just need to clean some threads, but other times it's just crap like this. So hopefully that served you well. And um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe uh, this video if you don't mind and appreciate you watching.